Hello everyone and welcome to the Formula E Pit Lane Preview Show. My name is Darren Adetosio. I'm Sauna CB. And we are coming to you from New York City ahead of two very important races this weekend. Absolutely, you said it. Rounds 11 and 12 here in New York City, in Brooklyn, baby. <laughs> oh yeah. What a place to host some cool races like this. And a really crucial point of the season, right? Six races left championship still very much up for grabs oh yeah and new york city just never disappoints does no. it we've had so many iconic moments here from sam bird winning the first two races yep. jean eric Verne becoming champion twice here what's going to happen this weekend is the big question yeah for sure new york city it's a moment maker in formula e and we'll get into that more later but let's find out what's coming up in the show Darren took us on a tour of New York City, showed us what's going on. Maximilian Gunter answered your questions from social media. And we also caught up with championship rivals Mitch Evans and Stoffel Van Dorn. But first, you're going to be blessed with Saunders with everything you need to know ahead of this weekend's racing. New York City has been a staple on the Formula E calendar for many years. Championships have been won here. And this weekend's doubleheader provides ample opportunity for drivers to stake further claim on this season's World Championship title. So with that in mind, what are the main talking points going into these races and who should we be looking out for? Now, it is so easy to say things like, there's too many races left, it's too early to call the title, etc., etc., etc. But if you just look at who is currently leading the championship standings and the run of form that Eduardo Motara has been on, it's safe to say he's firmly making himself the driver to beat. Woohoo! <laughs> Good job, Good guys. Good job. Mega job. Mega job. Four back-to-back -back podiums, five in total with three of them wins. There's only a few drivers that have achieved that level of consistency in a season. Only three others, in fact, have scored four back-to-back -back podiums, with all three going on to win the championship title. Could that mean this is Mortara's year? Even though the Rocket Venturi driver is the highest scoring driver, competition has been incredibly strong and similar consistency in big point scoring has been achieved across the breakaway top four in the championship standings. So jean eric Verne has a pretty good relationship with New York City. He's won and been crowned champion here twice before. Now he enters this weekend 11 points behind Mortara in the standings after seven double digit points hauls. Now that is an unprecedented high scoring average, despite having not won a race this season. Any driver would take a championship in whatever way it comes, race wins or not. And Verne is definitely one of the bookies favorites for success in the Big Apple. More high point scoring will keep him in the fight and title pressure on Mortara, but a race win in either of the two races here this weekend could unlock a route to a third championship title for the Frenchman. And points will be needed because Stoffel van Dorn and Mitch Evans are breathing down Jeff's neck with only four points separating the three drivers. Van Dorn was knocked off the top spot for the first time since Rome. Qualifying woes, thanks to difficulties with braking, left him starting the race from near the back of the grid in Marrakesh. But even then, we saw an outrageous climb up the order to finish 8th and in the points, 12 places higher than he started. Starting further up the order with that pace could have seen Van Dorn battling for the win and retaining his position at the top en route to his first World Championship title. The team will have hoped they've rectified the braking issue ahead of this weekend, so we expect to see a dialed-in Van Dorn in qualifying, trying to make up for the points lost in Marrakesh. Mitch Evans and his Jaguar TCS package has looked incredibly quick and importantly, energy efficient in the last few races. Now that efficiency has allowed for Mitch to move himself up the pack in the races, even in the closing stages, when others are having to save energy. But on occasion, like in Marrakesh, Mitch is prone to leaving himself a little bit too much work to do during the race. And it begs the question, if he'd been able to start higher up the grid in those races, could he have even more wins and be running away with a championship by this point? Mitch ran well here in the past and there's a touch of potential redemption this weekend after the catastrophic end for the Jaguar driver on our last visit. I'm out. I'm out. Sorry guys. Looking outside of the top four, there are a few other drivers that are lined up to do well this weekend. 
One driver you can never rule out of a New York City e Prix is Sam Bird. He's won here three times with two different teams, including the remarkable comeback story of last season. Antonio Felix Acosta got himself back on the podium in Marrakesh for the first time this season. It's likely too late to push for another driver's title, but his resurgence has helped Diaz de Cheetah in their hunt for a team's championship. They're only two points behind Rocket Venturi Racing at the top. It's a home race for Avalanche Andretti, with Andretti celebrating a home win here last season with Maximilian Gunter. The team now have an American driver in the lineup with Oliver Askew, so there's no better time to get back on the podium. They had a great team qualifying result in Marrakesh, and the extra incentive and push to do well on team home soil can have a big impact. Always exciting to be racing in New York City. Make sure you don't miss out on the action. Stay tuned to the Formula E social media and head over to fiaformulae.com forward slash watch to find out where you can watch the race where you are. You're not going to want to miss it because I'm pretty sure we've got a couple of great races on our hands. So much to look forward to this weekend and with just 15 points separating the top four drivers in the championship, it's looking pretty competitive. It's incredibly tight at the top, like, and it's, it's not just the top four, right? The third and fourth, Stoffel and Mitch, there's only one point between those guys. It's insane. And they had a really good drive in Marrakesh, I have to say. Yeah, it was kind of like the definition of great comeback drives. Stoffel, P20 to P8 and in the points, and Mitch Evans, P6 to the podium. Yeah. Amazing work. Amazing work. Well, let's take a look at them reflecting on those epic moments. Boom, Clark. Good. Yeah, man. man, I heard you uh, had a good one in Marrakesh, a good recovery. Well, yeah, it's not what I was planning on. I, I was hoping to be with you guys at the front, but... Uh, uh, I, was, I was cool with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, qualifying obviously didn't go that well. But what happened? Some brake problems. So basically qualified last, almost. Only for Andre to get all his laps deleted in, and, well, Giovinazzi to still be behind, so yeah. I don't know what happened there. But, um, yeah, so... I think I was 20th, um, got back to 8, which I think was, was alright, took a little bit of inspiration of your comeback drive from I, I heard. two years ago. I heard. Um, yeah, what happened to you there? Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, back in the group stages we had like the, um, yeah, obviously trying to go as late as possible and we thought we had like margin, 10 ah, You guys margin. missed the flag, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that won't hurt. Um, yeah, we thought we had 10 seconds margin, but we, we didn't. Yeah, I think that happened a couple of times to you guys. Uh, yeah, 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 we, right. we don't talk about it. Yeah, I mean, even this year, I gave myself a bit of work. Um, and yeah, but at some point, you were like right on Edo's, uh, Edo's gearbox, right? Yeah, it was looking good, but I think uh, we, we just suffered a bit more with, like, with the temperature. Mm. So the second phase of the race was just was like super difficult to yeah. manage. I had a lot of overtakes that race. Um, I can't remember like any. It's weird, right? You don't really like. They sort of become like a blur. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember many of them to be fair. Um, I just remember like getting the calls on the radio. Said, okay, now Fox overtake Trot. him. Yeah, Fox Trot. <laughs> Fox Trot. I don't know. Askew, Bird, Robin, whatever. Um, but it was just critical to. I mean, you know what it's like in a race. It's just critical, like when they tell you to overtake, that you actually have you to execute and just get on with it. And to do it efficiently. So. Um, I mean, luckily, Marrakesh is like one of the tracks where you can actually. It's relatively do that, straightforward. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, at the front as well, there was some good overtakes, good, good, um, good battles. Um, actually, more like the ones that come to memory, like um, the ones with Jeff. Yeah. Yes, yeah, as usually. He's a good it, defender, right? He's, good defender. he's a really good defender, good actually. Defender. Yeah. So we had a good little battle on the last lap. Yeah, up into turn three. Coasting he, super he early. Was, he was coasting like very early, right? Yeah, and I was I was uh, reading out my codes, my energy code. Oh, so you nearly hit him. Yeah, so like, all of a sudden he appeared and I like sort of freaked out and had yeah. to uh, get by. But he positioned it super well, like sort of just hovering in the middle. Got it done, so. Yeah, so I mean, so for me, obviously Marrakesh was all about trying to salvage your weekend a little bit and, and still try and pick up a couple of points, which, yeah. Unfortunately, we, you did. We managed. But yeah, now six to go and... and uh, they're all scoring big though. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Oh, every time on the like, podium, one of you guys are on the podium or yeah one of the four so uh it's yeah it's getting really tricky now like no one can back it off because yeah. if you do you're just getting dragged out yeah, of the fight now so exactly it's gonna be quite intense the final final couple of races how good. you guys been in new york before new york is normally a good race for us yeah um i was sam won, won here last year i got second yeah. in season five um yeah normally it's it's a good one but um you know how it is you just get a ride on, on the day right yeah you don't get a ride exactly. on the day you just you get sped out the back so yeah, for us it's not really been 
that happy. Not the best one. Yeah, not the best one, but. This is your Berlin, like equivalent of my Berlin. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, it's it's different this year with the quality format. See how it goes, but I think we'll, uh, yeah, I think we'll be a bit better this year. Well, we need to. <laughs> no excuse. Yeah, I mean, even even now we're super calm, but on track we're gonna be come, you know, put the helmet on. It's natural. I mean, I don't like you. Yeah, I don't like you either. <laughs> We'll fight out on track. Yeah. Great insight from both drivers there. Yeah, also cool to see them getting amongst it in New York City, checking out the skyline, that sort of thing. Yeah. In fact, weren't you in that exact spot yesterday? I was indeed. <laughs> I mean, Saunders, I couldn't come to New York City and not explore. It was amazing, had a look around, and yeah, had a lovely time. Let's take a look how she got on. Hello everyone and welcome to New York City. Here's our city guide presented to you by Saudia and where better to start off than Central Park. Now this is one of New York's most iconic locations. It is absolutely beautiful and also not to mention massive. I've just found out that it's bigger than the Principality of Monaco which is just incredible. So yeah, let's go and take a look around. Now, it does not surprise me that this is the most filmed location in the world because, guys, just take a look around us. There is so much on offer here from people playing sports to just relaxing in the sunshine, having a hot dog over there. I think I might get a bite to eat after we do this, actually. But it's just incredible to see so many people out and about enjoying this beautiful space. And I know that Saunders normally does the fun facts, but I'm going to throw this in there. You see all the trees around us? There are actually 20,000 here in Central Park, which absorb massive amounts of CO2, which, to put it into context for you guys, it's about 57 million smartphones being charged that it absorbs. Pretty epic stuff. And now let's go and see another green part of the city that was built very recently. And this is it. We are now at the High Line located in Manhattan's west side, which used to be an elevated freight route and has now been turned into this beautiful open space. And there's actually a really great story behind this. It was founded by community residents when this was about to be demolished, but they saved it. And this has actually been a huge catalyst for other cities in the United States to transform abandoned infrastructures into open spaces like this. Everyone's enjoying it. I'm about to explore, so let's have a look. So I think what's most incredible about this place are the views that you get of the city. As I mentioned, this used to be a railway line. You can literally see the tracks on the floor. So it's located bang in the center of the city. You get the most amazing skyline of Manhattan's west side. And yeah, it's just great to have a look at your Instagram pictures and just come and enjoy. New York is famous for lots of different foods, from hot dogs to bagels and everything in between. But you know what? I'm fancying something a little different for lunch today. Well, you can't come to New York without grabbing a little slice of pizza. I mean, I say a little slice. This is probably the size of my head. We're outside one of the most famous spots to grab pizza in the city. I'm about to have a bite now. Here we go. I'm going to do the classic New York fold as well. Right, this is it, guys. Mm-hmm. One scenic walk over the bridge later, and we've now made it to Brooklyn, the same borough where we're going to be racing this weekend. We've got the Brooklyn Bridge behind us, the Statue of Liberty just over the water. Let's see what else we can find. Well, would you look at that, another beautiful park. We're now at the Brooklyn Bridge Park, which is one of Brooklyn's most prestigious parks. And people come here for a number of activities from kayaking to pickleball. It's also a great spot for bird watchers, as there's over 120 species of birds in this park. There's just so much to do here, but it doesn't stop there. Over 10,000 school children come and visit the Environmental Education Centre right here in the park each year, which like Formula E, is inspiring the next generation to become greener. And finally, we are at the Red Hook Community Garden, which is located just moments away from where we're going to be racing this weekend. And guys, would you believe that this originally used to be a concrete baseball field? And now take a look around us. It is this beautiful green space, which spans across 2.75 acres and has so much going on from the solar panels behind us. There are bees over there, incredible local produce and sustainable farming happening here. And yeah, I just love that this exists for the local community. It's incredible and it's amazing to think that this is so close to our racetrack but those are our five things that you should see around new york city but now let's go racing love to see that i mean what's not to love about that community garden fresh produce local in the heart of the city great yeah. stuff it was great to get out and explore there although i do have to say i feel a little bit bad that i didn't bring you anything next time i'll go and get you what carrot courgette what do you fancy 
I'll take either, but probably courgette. Sweet okay. with courgette. Noted. Make it happen. Thank you very much. Uh, that's just one of the things going on in the city, Formula E related or not. There's things popping up all over the city, right? Lads popping up. I mean, yesterday we had an incredible event with our partners, Allianz and the Museum of Modern Art, where a spectacular livery was revealed. It looks so good. And guess what? Even if you missed out, you can see it if you're coming to the E-Prix this weekend. It's going to be trackside, so definitely go and check it out. And speaking of things that fans can see yeah. or get involved in, this week, tickets for the grand finale in Seoul went on sale. The track map got released as well. It looks incredible in and out of a stadium. I mean, what a place to host a final. I know. It looks epic, guys. But wait, I feel like we need to reel it back to New York City. Otherwise, yeah. we're going to get too excited. Fair. And on that note, we heard from Maximilian Gunter, who answered your questions. And he won last time we were here. Hi, guys. I'm Maximilian Gunter, and I'm going to answer your fan questions now. I mean, first of all, I feel very privileged to be racing here every year in New York because this place is really special. I love the city and as well the racetrack is amazing. You know, we've got such a big variety of corners. You've got good straights to overtake, but as well very technical areas of the track, very narrow corners. You have to be super precise. Basically, every corner you, you go close to the walls. And yeah, it's just, I like this, this character of, of the track. A lot of bumps as well in the braking zones. I just feel like, yeah, a good challenge around here and I've always enjoyed racing here. Well, I think Formula E is such a special championship because you have to manage so many things as a driver. It's really a team effort as well at the end of the day because the communication with your team, in particular with your race engineer, is highly important at the end of the day, especially in the race where you have to make a lot of strategic decisions. It's a bit like, yeah, like playing chess at, at high speed, I think uh, was a quote of, of some of the guys and I really like it because it's really yeah, fitting to what we are doing here. Uh, you have to be at the limit all the time, but at the same time you have to manage your race and it's really yeah, a great challenge. I love it and I'm very much a perfectionist, so yeah, I really feel like this is um, a good playground for me. I mean, obviously, you know, you have good memories to the, um, to the tracks, to the circuits where you've had success. So for sure, to pick out uh, some of my uh, victories, I would say, especially probably Santiago and here in New York City have been special places. Um, I mean, Berlin, you know, was, was nice for me to win my home race, but unfortunately it was without all the people there at the, at the grandstand because of COVID. So yeah, I would say, Definitely New York is, is, is a good place and yeah, a race from last year that I enjoyed a lot. It was a lot of fighting going on in the, in the top three, top four. And yeah, then to make the move in, in the hairpin uh, to overtake two guys in one move was, was pretty, pretty cool and uh, opportunistic. So yeah, it was, was a very nice memory from, from last year. It will be a pleasure for me to sign your photo, Chile. It, it looks very nice. I really like it. And yeah, of course, you get my, my signature in, in London. Thank you very much for your questions. We are going to see you on track this weekend. <laughs> OK, Saunders, how do you think Max is going to do this weekend? I mean, there's no doubt about it. He's got work to do, as he has all season. The, you know, the package isn't really there. It's not really delivering. Mm -hmm. But I spoke to him earlier, actually. He's in quite a good mood. OK. I feel like he's good Promising. energy. I yeah. think, you know, they want to end the season strong and look forward to the next season. The package hasn't been there for them, so I mean, we can see anything happens in Formula E. Let's say there's a big safety car, could level the playing field a little bit. He's won here before, clearly likes the circuit. Yeah, who knows? He can Who do knows? Well. Yeah, well, I mean, Formula E is all about being unpredictable, so I guess we're going to have to find out this weekend. <laughs> but speaking of predictions, Saunders, it's that time of the show where you know what's coming. Yes. I'm not even going to say the question. My favourite I'm not going to ask it. My favourite bit. Go on. Um, predictions for this weekend. You know what? I think the top four is the focus. That's, that's where the battle is, right? It's going to be incredibly close. It's going to be down to mistakes, I think, with mm. those guys, rather than who has the better drive or whatever. But there are some other stories to be paying attention to, like especially you think of the team's championship. If someone like Degrassi does a really good race, he's got podiums here in, in the past, Rocket Venturi are in line for a team's championship. If someone like De Costa does really well, Diaz Cheetah are in line for a team's championship. There's other stories going on. Yeah. And then I think experience comes into it as well, like Sam Bird, he could be good. Degrassi again could do well because of experience. And then I say probably the final point 
is got to be the home race. Yeah. The home race. Andretti. Yeah. yeah. Andretti, they're the home race heroes. You know, you've got Oliver Askew here. This is a home US race for him. And don't, that does a lot, you know. It can, mm. I think that can has a little effect. Maximilian Gunter, when he won, it was BMW Andretti. The big boss was here. Yeah. He hadn't had a win like in the races before it. It was sort of out of nowhere. Just does something. Oh, Adds to their spirit. It up a little bit. A little some, some. And, and Jesse haven't looked bad. They were great in qualifying in Marrakesh, so who knows? Well, I guess we're going to find out this weekend, everyone. New York City Epre, there's no turning back. Matara, Fern, Van Dorn, and Evans. A fight for the World Championship. Brooklyn is the battleground. Electrifying racing in the city that never sleeps. Overtakes and crashes in 170 miles per hour. Race for the line. Oh, look at that. This is New York City E3. No turning back.